All right, so page three of 10, subordination. If applicable, seller carryback financing is or is not to be subordinated to a construction loan. If seller agrees to subordinate, such subordination shall only be allowed if the seller carryback financing is not in default and if the seller approves the terms and conditions of the construction loan to be recorded as a senior loan. Um, approval will not be unreasonably withheld. If seller subordinates to the seller carryback financing to a senior loan, to the construction loan, the seller may acknowledge that in order to protect the seller's carryback financing, the seller may have to make payments on the senior loan if the senior loan is in default. Brokers recommend that all parties seek legal uh, counsel, remember, uh, appropriate counsel regarding the risks of subordination. All right, so what does subordination mean? Subordination in simple terms is the process of ranking home loans. So here the seller carryback would be under um, or in back of the uh, construction loan. Okay, title and escrow. <clears throat> Make sure you're using a title company that knows about land. Um, <clears throat> sometimes they don't and um, things can get pretty hairy, uh, especially when it comes to the affidavit of disclosure. Uh, that gets recorded with the deed and has to be notarized. So. Um, Make sure that your escrow company has done land deals before. Title investing, well, this, this is all pretty self-explanatory. The company name, and um, this is where they put in the escrow officer's name. However, I never do that because the escrow's, escrow officers leave. They're not part of the contract, and if the escrow officer leaves, they can still use that escrow officer's email to get into the file. Um, it's probably a good idea not to put in the escrow officer's name. Um, all right, and sometimes it could be incorrect. So say that they you put in uh, Sally Jones for the escrow officer, and she ends up uh, not working there anymore, and someone takes over for her. So just don't put the escrow officer's name in. Title investing. Buyer will take. Uh, title is determined before close of escrow, so they're going to decide it before close of escrow how they're going to take title. Title Taking title may have significant legal, estate planning, and tax consequences, and buyer is advised to obtain legal advice uh, regarding legal and tax. The title company will not give you information or counsel you as to how to take title. You have to find that out yourself through your tax and legal advice. Title commitment and title insurance. Escrow company is hereby instructed to obtain and deliver to buyer and seller directly, uh, which means they both get it separately, um, addressed pursuant to 8S and 9C, which is at the end uh, of the contract, or is otherwise provided. When I send a contract over to the title company, I always give them my client's name, number, phone number, email address, and any other pertinent information regarding the client. Um, so that would be with where it says uh, or otherwise it provided a commitment for title insurance together with complete and legible copies of all documents that will remain as exceptions to buyer uh, buyer's policy um, of title insurance, including but not limited to conditions, covenants, restrictions, or the CCNRs, deed restrictions, and easements within 15 days of the contract acceptance. Again, if you're going to close in 14 days, um, you're putting this time frame in here. Make sure that you give it at least 15 days because title has 15 days to get that to you. Uh, buyer shall have prior to the expiration of the due diligence period, which you can make shorter than 30, uh, to provide written notice of any items disapproved. Buyer shall be provided at seller's expense um, as standard owner's title insurance policy showing the title vested in buyer. Uh, buyer may acquire extended coverage at buyer's own additional expense. Seller shall convey title by warranty deed subject to existing taxes, assessments, covenants, restrictions, right away, um, easements, and other matters of record. Or, and then you can add in here if it's a different kind of deed. Again, seek uh, legal advice on that one, or have your buyer seek legal advice on that one. <clears throat> additional instructions. So this whole section here, title and escrow, is the title's uh, instructions on how to do the 
process through close um, and also notifying the buyer and seller of what the title uh, or escrow company will require. So additional instructions. Escrow company shall pr promptly furnish notice of pending sale that contains the name and address of the buyer to any homeowners association in which the property is located. If the escrow company is acting as the title agency, but not as the title insurer uh, issuing the title insurance policy, escrow shall deliver to the buyer and seller upon deposit of funds a closing protection letter from the title insurer indemnifying the buyer and seller for any losses due to the fraudulent acts or breach of escrow instructions by the escrow company. All documents necessary to close this transaction shall be executed promptly by seller and buyer in the standard form used by escrow company. Escrow company shall modify such documents to extent necessary to be consistent with this contract. Escrow uh, company fees, unless otherwise stated herein, shall be allocated equally between the seller and the buyer. Escrow company shall send all parties and brokers copies of all notices and communications directed to seller and buyer and broker. Uh, escrow company shall provide brokers access to escrowed materials and information regarding the escrow. If an affidavit of disclosure is provided, escrow company shall record the affidavit at close of escrow, and that goes along with the deed. And it has to be notarized, as I said before. Okay, prorations, expenses, and adjustments. Taxes. Real property taxes payable by the seller shall be prorated through close of escrow. Based upon the latest tax bill available, the parties agree that any discrepancy between the latest tax bill available and the actual tax bill when received shall be handled as a post-closing matter and buyer or seller may be responsible for additional taxes to each other. Um, I would make sure that this is correct prior to close of escrow. Rents, interest, and expenses. Again, this is vacant land, <clears throat> but there are rents, um, like if there's people using your property for grazing or for storage. Um, rents, interest on existing notes, um, if transferred, utilities, sometimes there's utilities on there for maybe a water well that's shared and the person that holds it on their land um, is renting it out to other people around there or um, sharing it or whatever. So all that information has to be given. The operation operating expenses shall be prorated through close of escrow. The parties agree to adjust any rents received after close of escrow as a post-closing matter. So if any rents come in afterwards, um, they, the buyer and seller would have to work that out themselves. Say something got mailed, it didn't get to title or it didn't get to the seller in time and it comes afterwards, I would have that in writing that seller owes or maybe have a seller hold back or something of that amount. Deposits. All deposits held by seller pursuant to rent lease agreements uh, shall be credited against the cash required of the buyer at close of escrow or paid to buyer by seller at close of escrow. Okay, post-closing matters. The parties um, shall promptly adjust any item to be prorated that is not determined or determinable at close of escrow as a post-closing matter by appropriate cash payment to the other party outside of the escrow when the amount is due, when the amount due is uh, determined. Seller and buyer agree that escrow company and brokers are relieved of any responsibility for said adjustments. So whatever the adjustment is, um, say they don't know a certain amount and it's not determinable uh, and it happens, has to happen after close, that um, you get that in writing that that information is given to either the buyer or the seller. And then follow up. Follow up. That concludes page two, page three of ten.